Hello everyone, 104 checking in for UK CB TV channel once again. So uh, yeah, I'm in a state of shock guys, to be honest. We just had the most phenomenal weekend on the uh, old off-grid messaging there on MeshCore. And uh, yeah, wow. Anyway, I'll tell you all about it. And I will also go through some of the questions raised, comments on my last MeshTastic versus MeshCore video. Okay, thanks for sticking with it. And uh, yeah, we've just come through. I'm still in a state of shock, guys. So if I sound a bit airheaded, then that's what it is. Something of a state of shock because the messaging system, MeshCore, has been, and I don't use this word very often, insane. It's been awesome. We've had uh, what's known as a tropo lift here in the UK, a little bit uh, further afield. And I would say probably at times we've had 200 messages an hour, maybe more, maybe less. And it's been absolutely amazing. A laugh, the whole lot, long distance stuff and all sorts. Now, I won't go into technical details about a tropo lift because there's a lot of non-technical people interested in this type of stuff. Long and short of it is certain atmospheric conditions, high pressure, hot and cold layers of air and cloud and fog and type of thing can lead to atmospheric conditions that allow for radio signals to rattle around in the atmosphere and go further than they normally would. Now you may have seen a few warnings coming out about uh, terrestrial TV getting knocked around over the last few days. Same thing, that's much further afield television, television stations interfering with your local ones. So it can even knock out the TV. So sometimes it can be a good thing, sometimes a fun thing, sometimes it can be a bad thing. But um, yeah, it's been absolutely amazing here. Contacts furthest away from me, or it goes through some repeaters, but it, it's one hell of a thing. Some people have been seeing 18 hops through repeaters, and these repeaters are quite a big distance away. So the enhancement of the tropo lift has, has really made it happen. Furthest away from me, probably outfit station guy called Pops up there in Cumbria. It was all right up Cumbria way. And that was phenomenal. Been uh, exchanging quite a few messages with the guys over in the East, including Andy K and um, Nismo and all that over there. Quite a few others, Surrey, I think uh, Kent, all that lot over there. So that was brilliant. Good laugh as well. Now, I'd be a liar to say that every single message that I sent got heard. Every single reply was two-way. It wasn't. But uh, there was enough there for a right good laugh. A lot of banter. It was certainly Friday night was as close to a, a night out as I've had in a very long time. I don't go out on a, a weekend on the uh, the drink, not for at least 25 years. But that was that was a good crack, I tell you. It was a good crack. And that's the way it should be. I'm not a serious. I can be very serious about stuff. But if I don't have to be serious, I like a laugh and a joke, guys. I really do. Anyway, that was brilliant. Carried on all over the weekend. Come to Sunday night. It was almost like uh, Mother Nature said, right, you've had your fun. And it stopped. But the good thing is, is prior to the tropo lift, we had good comms around here and right up through to the Midlands, out through to Wiltshire. And now it's stopped. It's come back down to that level. And we've still got decent messaging locally and a little bit further afield. And it's not going to take an awful lot now for a couple of extra good repeaters. And we'll have the east in all the time. We'll have the north in all the time. I had a couple of people come back to me from Manchester. In fact, if you did see me at all on the uh, on the old um, messaging list, let me know in the, content, the comments below. That would be fantastic. Freebird. Okay, Freebird is me, North Somerset. Okay, so uh, if you did see me or managed to get a, a message from me or whatever, let me know below and you'll get the old thumbs up. So, uh, yeah, absolutely brilliant. So it's back to normal now. The system held up. So we didn't get every single message through, but it held up. Nothing ceased to function. It didn't get saturated and it worked really well. Only thing I suppose some people were saying, and me too, that uh, our contact lists filled up. My max is out at 300. That does vary between different types of hardware 
and it uh, necessitated me sort of knocking the last hundred received off just to make some headroom and that filled up the next day but so there's ways around that you can turn off the auto add on your contacts and all the rest of it and um yeah there's ways around that so uh, it was a nice problem to have to be honest so there we go so i'm not really a dx chaser, chaser or anything like that but that was good fun guys and it was a really good stress test for the system anyway let's go back to my previous video now mesh tastic versus mesh core uh i would say looks like some people are quite partisan a bit like uh the sort of four by four scene you got the jeep guys you got the toyota guys you got the land rover guys and sometimes it can get quite sort of uh, competitive heated even between things like that just chill out guys it's just a, a messaging system just go with what works for you try the different systems have a play around look into it a bit and just roll with what you fancy really no need to um, argue about anything get uptight about anything just go with it if you find that mesh tastic fits your use case go with it if you find like me around here mesh core is perfect because i i'm really into the messaging thing not uh, any sort of telemetry monitoring sort of thing it fits perfectly for me and it works really well perhaps if i was 50 miles further south i would be on mt all the time and in fact when i go away with my little hiking setup that is actually mesh tastic i'm not anti mesh tastic in any shape or form i actually use that for my hiking setup mainly because it's very good with the smart positioning so it can track me when i'm hiking should i go missing and also it's very good at passing very easy to do to pass your phone's gps location onto your nodes and that's then sent out as a position so it's very easy to do and your node your actual hardware doesn't need to have a gps facility or board on it so it's very good for that so yeah i do both i do both but here for me mesh core is phenomenal now i've said before i'm not a monetized channel i don't accept anything to test for free no freebies no nothing like that ask no merch none of that type of stuff i'm just an old-fashioned youtuber from the old days that used to shove things out there for the benefit of the community so uh, not monetized not sponsored nothing don't know the devs apart from what i've seen of them on the internet and all the rest of it and uh, there you go so what you see from me is based upon my own unbiased opinions and findings right what else did i see coming in on the comments on that last video of mine uh we've got the the sort of things where like i said people perhaps in america mesh tastic works better because they've got the mqtt mqtt probably is essential for for a really big country sometimes where it's linked over the internet that's of no interest to me we've got the population density in the uk certainly in england that's um very high compared with probably a lot of places in the usa so what might work here might not work so well over there and vice versa for example i think england's got 60 million people odd in it and the actual area of england is pretty much the same as alabama i think and i think alabama's got six million people so you can see the sort of difference in population density i don't know whether it's because i've got a west country rhotic accent that uh, i might sound a bit american to some people i'm not in america i'm in in england uk england okay so um like i say I people coming through saying um PNW over here and I had to look at what PNW was I didn't know what it was it means nothing to me it turns out it's Pacific Northwest so what might work for that guy because he was quite sort of uh, forthright in his opinion on uh, mesh core fair enough and uh, what might work for him over there with the MQTT because he was linking up stuff over MQT MQTT doesn't work for me or I don't want it to work so I'm not really interested in that you can do that with mesh core but it's not sort of promoted as such i'll leave a, a link actually into uh, the fellow liam cottle he did a presentation on mesh core i'll leave a, a link into that video because he'll explain it better because uh he's the uh he's one of the developers so uh yeah have a look at that so uh, yeah that's that what else did i uh, get crop up uh, a lot of people said um yeah it's a shame you've got two competing systems 
there's probably more competing systems. Reptilium, not done anything with Reptilium, but um, yeah, I, I, I did think the same, actually. I thought, oh, no, don't say I've got to choose. And, oh. But I changed my mind. I changed my mind, guys, because one reason, one reason only, really, is one of competitiveness of humans. And when you've got a competing system, it will drive people on to develop and develop things, facilities, features, get the bugs out and all the rest of it. It's just human nature to do so. And uh, let's look at the uh, example of a car, perhaps. If there was, say, one car manufacturer, you either bought that car or you had nothing. Say now you wanted a radio, you wanted a cigarette lighter. They turn around and say, tough luck. We've got no plans to introduce those. Say now then another car manufacturer came on the scene and he said, sure, you can have those things. And we'll put that other feature, we can have electric windows as well. The first car manufacturer think we're in trouble here. We need to match them and improve on their system, their vehicle. And that's how these things move on. So I mean, one system, two systems. Yeah, I can see why it does sort of mean that in some areas it's sort of split between the two and some parts of this if i was 50 miles further south it's pretty much all mess tastic but it'll all come out in the wash in due course maybe another system will come along and everyone will go over to that so it's just the way it is guys it's just the way it is so that's my view on that and the main thing as well it's not like the video days when there was two competing systems the vhs and the betamax if you bought the betamax you'd thrown your money away this you can just reflash one type of board over to the other and vice versa so it's not a deal breaker really if you try one system and it's not working out you try another system it's not working out you can go with whatever suits you best and that's what i suggest you do have a play have an experiment try and get into it a bit and if you put a node up and there's no one else around then leave it up. There's a lot of people say, I tried it for a couple of hours and there's nobody on, so I switched it off. Sometimes you've got to be the first one, you've got to be the pioneer, you've got to be the first one on the park, you know? First one to the party. Leave it up, maybe in a couple of weeks' time, couple of months' time. Someone else comes along, puts up a repeater, links you in with someone else, and it all starts kicking off. That's what happened around here. It's about five guys on it for a long time. And then now it's, well, I wouldn't be surprised that there's not 100 on it, just under normal conditions. So that's that. That's what I think about that. Um, the other thing was mesh core is not free. It costs you money. I've not paid a penny for anything I've done with mesh core already. Fully functional. The only thing I do notice is there's a 10 second paywall when you try to log into your repeater. If you don't want to wait 10 seconds you can pay five pounds to get rid of that i don't mind waiting 10 seconds uh also there's some custom firmwares and enhanced firmwares super feature type things you can pay I think eight pounds for but um the apps are free and i say i've not paid anything now i haven't got a problem with um either mesh tastic or mesh core or anyone really I'm trying to raise a little bit of cash to cover their overheads and um, think about it. Can you really hand on heart say that you would spend hundreds, maybe thousands of hours doing your sort of day job all over again, just purely for the community? I think they deserve some recompense. At the end of the day, they've got overheads and they've got to put uh, food on the table and pay the bills. So I've got no problem with that. Uh, different ways to raise cash. People say, well, you just stick with the donation model. Who, again, hand on heart, has actually donated anything to anything? Not many. There's just a small percentage. So MeshCore have gone down the route of some paid features. MeshTastic, they've got, I believe, the Solutions Program, where they've done a bit of a link up with some manufacturers, and they get a little bit back when the manufacturers sell a piece of hardware. Fair enough. Good on. Hope it works out. So there we go. That's my view on that. Uh, the other thing is uh, open source. I believe MeshCore is largely open source. You can fork it or whatever. 
uh, the apps are free, but I don't think the apps are open source, but they're free. So I've got no problem with that, to be honest. Um, if that's a deal breaker for you with uh, MeshCore, then so be it. Like I say, you, you make your own mind up. Do your research, make your own mind up. But as I say, I've not paid anything for uh, MeshCore or MeshTastic for that, uh, for that matter. So uh, there we go. So uh, that's a few of the main points that were raised. And uh, also, like I said, in some areas, people say, oh, yeah, MeshTastic is absolutely fantastic. Great to hear. Other areas, they say MeshCore is absolutely fantastic, including here. Fantastic. You just roll with whatever works for you. Anyway, other news is I have now got a Helltech V4. Now, I could have jumped on the bandwagon and shoved the, a bit of an unboxing and first impressions type video out there. Fair enough. A lot of people do that. But uh, not being monetized, I don't need to be uh, out there first. I can just soak test it, test it over a period of time. And then I can bring you my findings, having let it run for a while. I wouldn't want to say, yeah, put a Helltech up and it's fantastic. V4 is, is the place to be. I wouldn't want to say that because say now in a week's time, I think actually there's a problem with that or this is what I've discovered. I wouldn't want anyone to go out and spend money because I said something was great when it turns out that after I've tested it for a while, it's not. So I will be doing some stuff on the V4. I've got it set up as repeater. I haven't um, got any test kit for this sort of these sort of frequencies, so it won't be, won't be particularly technical. But I'll give you some um, findings on the Helltech V4 when I'm confident enough that I know the device well enough to be um, fairly accurate with my findings. Anyway, let's take you over and have a look at some of these contacts that uh, flooded in over the weekend, and I will catch you on the next one. Okay, I don't this crap old phone will focus. I ought to do a screen record ready, but I can't be bothered. Anyway, so uh, let's have a look. So this is tonight's sort of stuff. So we got uh, Co60 up there in the Midlands. Good lad. We got a guy over there in Wales. Gary spelt with two R's, so different uh, type of Gary to me. We got uh, NJL there. We got Grumpy, all that type of stuff. So we got. Uh, Loads of the locals. I'll give you a proper shout out video one day because I know you all like that type of thing. But I'll have to scroll through quickly because it's uh, outrageous uh, how many messages have come in. Okay. Scroll, scroll. Look at it all. There's a few of the blue ones I put out. That's to still on today. This is not even when the lift's running, guys. So look at it. Going back, we've got BB there. Oi, oi, BB. And I've got my glasses on, so I can't actually see some of this stuff. But, um, yeah, I'll do a shout-out video soon. Salisbury. Fantastic. There's me on one of my other nodes, because up at the old man's there. There's Andy. Freebird. You copying? There we are, Andy. He was hearing me. And this is Sunday. We're only back to Sunday. Look at it. Just look at it. Straight out Frampton there, look. He's a regular on our local setup. Took Polarity. Just picking out a few at random, guys. Nismo. I think that says. Spoke to him a few times on there. Absolutely tip top. Say I made it all the way up to Cumbria. Up to a guy called Pops, Manchester is coming back, look, it's still scrolling, still scrolling, still scrolling, still scrolling, still scrolling, look at it, there's squillions, guys, there's squillions, squillions, anyway, that's enough of that, Lark, so uh, I will be catching up with you again soon, and uh, probably the next video will be about the Helltech V4, cheers, everyone.